thank you all for joining me today. I have actually been on sabbatical for seven weeks. So this is my very first presentation after that. So hopefully I'm not too rusty. I did rehearse yesterday, but we'll see how it goes. I need you to just give, cut me just play a bit of slack, but it's going to be, we're going to learn about all kinds of tips and tricks that have to do with AutoCAD 2017. And I'm really looking forward to this webcast. And if you do have any questions as we go along, we are very fortunate today because we have the fabulous Reed Addis, who will be answering any questions that you happen to have. Because as I'm talking, of course, I won't be able to answer questions at the same time. So you're in good hands, though. You're in excellent hands. So with each new release of AutoCAD, the AutoCAD team gets together and they come up with a theme. And you can kind of see over the past few releases what the theme was. Um, and with, the, with AutoCAD 2017, I want you to know that I cheated on that theme. I added my own in. <laughs> I feel like AutoCAD 2017, that most of the features that were added in, so many of them were wish list items that we had just been waiting for for so long that were finally granted. So I find that AutoCAD 2017 is a real crowd pleaser. For example, how long have we wanted to be able to convert PDF files to objects inside of AutoCAD? It's been like the number one wish list for about as long as I can remember. And so finally that wish was granted along with some other great wishes. And we're going to talk about all of those inside of this uh, seminar that came out with AutoCAD 2017. And I like to start off with the user interface because if you are not comfortable with the user interface, well, you're not going to like this release of AutoCAD. And there are quite a few. They're kind of small features, um, but they are, uh, I think you're going to really like them. And if I don't show them to you, you may not even notice that they're in there because we do have a tendency to use our software the same way we used the release before and the release before that. And I want to make sure that that doesn't happen with you. So I'm going to jump on over to AutoCAD and we're just going to take a look at some of these features. Like I said, small but mighty features. For example, I'm going to go find a dialog box that has a list in it. Now in the past, this dialog box would probably look like this and we would have to do slider bar, slider bar, slider bar, slider bar. Say that three times fast. And I am very lazy. I try to avoid the slider bar wherever possible. <laughs> so now with AutoCAD 2017, you can make these dialog boxes bigger, and that means that you can avoid the dreaded slider bar, which also means you won't burn quite as many calories. But that's okay. Right. So that's just one of the dialog boxes that has a list that you know it has a list of, of things in it that you can now control the size of. I'm just going to go grab another one just to kind of give you an idea. You can see this one has not been expanded yet. Here I'm in the Page Setup Manager, so I can take that, grab it. She says, take it, grab it. There we go. Didn't want to let me grab it there. And you'll see that I can make it any size that I want. And it will stay this way. That's what I like to do. You don't have to keep resizing it. It will stay that way. So that's a tiny little feature, but that's going to make your life just a little bit better. And you'll also see inside of the insert dialog box that now we can size it and make a really big preview. You can see that's an amazing block I'm showing you right now. <laughs> yeah, be worthless block. Um, but nevertheless, you can make the preview nice and big. And also, one of my favorite features that were added into 2017, also a small feature, but I have the ability to type in the, you know, the first few characters of a block name and it will go find it for me as opposed to me, once again, dreaded slider bar going through the list because I'm too lazy for that. So those are just a few little changes that I think that you will find helpful. All right, let's take a look at some more. If for those of you who are in the surveying industry or you work with surveyors, you will see that inside of the units command, they added in a new insertion scale so that you can insert content that um, with US survey feet as the units. That was a wish list request for a very small percentage of you, but somebody is doing a happy dance right now. I know it's somewhere. Let's, so we got, have you ever done this? Have you ever selected objects on the screen and then hit the delete key? Now you cannot see me hitting the delete key, but I am hitting the delete key. 
have it come back and say, hey, you know, it didn't do anything. So normally it would have just wouldn't work because I accidentally turned pick first off. Or if you're a CAD manager, you have someone in your office who accidentally turned pick first off. And we know that that is a bad thing to do because it affects quite a few different features inside of AutoCAD. But now with 2017, AutoCAD is going to give you a hint. It's going to go, hey, did you know that pick first was off? You want me to turn it on for you? And I can say, yes, I'd like you to turn it on for me. And now in this situation, it took those objects and, of course, it deleted them. We're going to undo that. Well, let's actually, let's go. Oops, remember the old oops command? It just undoes the last erase. It doesn't undo the last command, which would accidentally turn my pick first back off again, right? <laughs> so now we have pick first set to the correct value. And you can set it up so it never asks you again. It's, it's, I think any of you who are CAD managers and you work with people that don't know AutoCAD very well, you're going to love the fact that it's going to give you a heads up with pick first. Okay, what else? If I move my cursor to the top of the screen and I put it on top of the tool in the ribbon, we all know that a tool tip appears, right? So we now have control over exactly how long it takes before a tool tip appears because apparently somebody needed that. So you'll see here on the display tab and options, you'll see show tool tips, number of, so you can turn that off altogether if you don't like tool tips. But if you have it on, you now can control how many seconds before they display. Maybe you think they pop up too fast. Maybe you think they pop up too slow. So you have complete control over that. Once again, small feature, but it's kind of nice to know that it is there. And then this last one is one I actually learned from Reed Addis, who is mute today. But I did not even know this was in here. In fact, I went to the AutoCAD, our technical marketing manager, who teaches us about all the features inside of AutoCAD 2017, and she didn't know about it either. <laughs> so how does Reed find these things? <laughs> there is, okay, but, but I will say, this is one of those commands that I have no idea why they put it in, but it's kind of a fun way to mess with your coworker if you ask me. So let me show it to you. You can choose to use it or not. So wait, before I do it, actually, I look at the screen, you can see I have a regular crosshairs. I've kind of modified mine to, to look the way I like to work, but it's a standard, usual crosshairs. So cursor type is for those of us who are really into the Windows arrow, right? <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and set it to 1, and you will see that now I get the Windows arrow, which is pretty crazy when you're drafting and designing. But if it makes you happy, you can set it to the Windows arrow. This was not on any wish list ever. If you read, it will correct me later. Coworker. Oh, yeah, I showed it to you. Okay, let's go back over to the PowerPoint. And we went through all of those things that were new to the user interface. There's a few more, but I just kind of picked the ones I thought that you'd be more interested in, which, of course, included cursor type. <laughs> I'm going to set that for your friends. It'll drive them crazy trying to figure out how to put it back. Okay, the big crowd pleaser. Hey, the reason we're all here, the reason we love AutoCAD 2017, is the ability to import PDF files. So excited about that. I always love when I do this in front of an audience that I can see because they get so excited when they hear about this feature. There are two different ways to convert a PDF to objects. So you can take a PDF underlay and you can select the objects in it that you want to convert to geometry. Or you can just kind of start from scratch and you can import PDF files as geometry. I will show you both ways. Uh, just a few tips about this. Uh, it will bring in two type fonts and it will recognize it as M text. Yay, that's good. You can bring in raster images. It will convert them to PNG files, but you do have the ability to tell it which directory you want it to land in. And another piece of information that I think is really important is that if you have a, a PDF file that has an SHX font in it, it will not come across as text. It won't be able to recognize it as text. You won't be able to edit it like text. It will look great. It will look fantastic. But it will be individual objects like circles and lines. So I'll show that to you also when, um, when we bring in a PDF file. And incidentally, this, when you're bringing in a PDF file, it does not have to be from, an auto, from AutoCAD. You didn't have to be sent out from AutoCAD. It could even be a scanned image, in which case AutoCAD would just do the best it could 
to try to figure out what the geometry was as it converted the objects to AutoCAD objects. So, I mean, be saying you might get a little extra circle when you run it. In. But it does work, so you should definitely give it a try. Let's take a look. Let's go have a look. All right. So here I have a file that has a PDF in it. I'm going to go to model space. I've already sent a PDF underlay in it. Okay, and these are it's they're it's just being treated as a PDF. You can see when I click on it that the ribbon automatically changed to only give me options relative to PDF import, right? So I'm going to turn some of the layers off just to make this a little bit easier for us to see which one do I want, you guys. Just so there is only geometry. Now, I don't have to. And incidentally, if I kept those dimensions on there, they would come in, but they would come in as individual objects. They would not be smart associative dimensions. You know, someday they will be, but not right now. Okay. Simple. Import as objects. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to just select the objects that I want to bring in. And then it wants to know what I want to. Okay. What just happened? <laughs> What just happened? That's weird. Oh, that's because I went too fast. Okay, let's do that again. Let's hope it really did do an undo. It did. Okay. I think I just accidentally hit an enter twice. Let's try that again. Import as objects. I'm going to go ahead and select the objects. Okay, so this is what happened right here. I accidentally hit an extra enter, and you can see the default there is unload or whatever it was that was the default back then. I'm going to go ahead and just detach the original underlay so that you don't, the other objects are not in the way, and I apologize for that. It's a little bit too, happy, too much happening too fast there, or perhaps too much caffeine this morning. But as you can see, as I'm moving my cursor around, these are individual objects. They're, here we have a polyline. If I zoom in, this is a circle. And you can see it did its best to connect these together as polylines. You can see it connected these guys together. It did a pretty darn good job. And then if you wanted to join some of the others together, you could do so. Okay, so that's how you do it if you have an underlay. So I'm going to erase all of these. And let's do it from scratch, right? So let's go to Insert. And let's go to PDF Import. And then it wants to know if I want to select an underlay. Nope, I want to bring it in as a file. And conveniently, I happen to have one right here. So we'll open that up. Now, this particular one has several different pages for my PDF. I'm just going to bring in page number three. And I want to control the scale factor. It was originally a quarter of an inch equals a foot. I apologize for all, all those of you who are not using imperial units because we're crazy here in the US. But I want to take a look at some of the things on here because it is really, really important. Of course, I don't know why you wouldn't want to bring too tight text across with a raster images, but those are options. How do you want the layers to be decided? Uh, do you want them to use the layers that came from the PDF? Uh, you know, maybe it's a scanned image, so maybe you'd prefer it to create object layers, all the circles on one layer, all the lines on another layer, so on and so forth. Or if you just want complete madness, you could just put everything on the current layer, right? And these are also very important options down here under import options. Join line and arc segments, of course. You want as few objects as possible. Uh, I'm just going to point out a couple of these. The last one, I think, is also very important. Infer line types from collinear dashes. So basically, if you do not have that selected and you have a line type with like dashes and dots and so on and so forth, well, um, they're all going to come in as individual objects, which sounds pretty awful. Your entity count will go right through the roof. So I like to have that one selected. All right, I'm going to say OK. Give it just a second. Actually, it's usually faster than that. Maybe it's because there's a lot of people on the line. <laughs> let's zoom in. Let's see what just happened, right? Let's have a look. So this is a two-type font. And you can see that AutoCAD recognizes it as two-type two type as an M text, so you could very easily go in and you could edit that as opposed to if you take a look here, you will see that this is SHX font, but you can see that I have individual polylines. It says, oh man, that's an ellipse. 
So those didn't come across so well. You could get around that, of course. You could erase it and you could put it in as, as text again. But boy, it looks good. Lisa looks good. And let's just take a look at this raster image over here. So I'm going to move my cursor over here and you can see it is in fact a raster image. You can show me that. There we go. And where do the raster images go? I'm going to do a right click and go into options. And underneath files, you will see there's an option for PDF import image location. So you can pick the directory. Unfortunately, you can't have it do it per project in the different files. You're going to have to specifically say where you want them to land. But at least we can bring the roster images in, which is good. Okay. So look how beautiful that is. It does a great job. And I've had a lot of very happy AutoCAD 2017 users who use this all the time that say that it is great, great, great. I'm so excited about it. Hopefully you are too. Back over to our PowerPoint. Okay, we talked about all of this. Smart center lines and center marks. <laughs> We've had center lines and center marks for a long time, but they've never been associative. So if you move the objects that you use to draw the center mark or the center line, uh, they didn't go with it. You know, there, there was no attachment, no association. So now the center marks and center lines have a slightly higher IQ. They're very easy to work with. Um, if for some reason you decide you don't want it to be associative anymore, there's an option for center disassociate. There's all kinds of variables to help you control the center marks and center lines to get them to look just right. Um, very easy to work with. I like that. In fact, one of the things I like the most about 2017 is that just about everything is super easy to get. It's not complicated, and uh, I like that. <laughs> it makes it easier for me, too. Easier for you than for me. So let's go take a look at the center marks and the center lines. All right. Go to model space. Get a better view. Hopefully you guys can see that okay. All right. So where would it be? Of course, it will be underneath the annotate. That makes sense where they were before, center marks and center lines. Let's start with the center line, and we'll zoom up really close. I want to draw a center line between these two objects. You can see how easy it is to continue that particular line type and to just use grips to extend it anywhere you want it to go. That was a very good drafting practice there. But to me, the more important part is if I make a, a modification to the objects that were used to create that center line, you can see that it thinks it believes the center line needs to go with it, which is good. So it's smart. We like that. We'll do one more of those just because we can and because they're fun. Let's do another center line. We'll do it between these two guys. Same idea. You can take that and you can pull that out. That's also breaking every drafting standard in the world. Okay, how about center marks? Go ahead and grab the circle. You can see very, very easy. If I grab the circle, whoop, I so one of the things about center marks is it continues to loop so that it wants you to keep adding more and more center marks. But center lines only let you do one at a time so for kind of obvious reasons. But so I, I often forget that it's going to loop me in there, no problem. So you can see if I move the object that was used for the center mark, it stays with it because it's smart. If I change the size of it, it adapts accordingly. And I'm also just going to select that particular center mark. And let's take a look in properties. I just want to show you all of these options, the cross size, the gaps, the extensions. So you do have complete control of all things center lines, which is very, very important. And center marks. You can make them look exactly the way you want them to look. In fact, if I type in center, you will see on the right-hand side all types of system variables as well. They go with center marks and center lines, so you can control them not just in properties, but you can control them by manually typing them in or maybe putting them in a script file. Or as a CAD manager, you can scroll with them as well. All right, so that's all things center marks and center lines. Hopefully you guys are still there. Not tweeting unless it's something nice. Or you in your email. I'm trying to keep your attention. Some coffee. Have another sip of coffee. Of course, for most of you, it's um, it's you know, it's noon, right? For me, I'm in, in Oregon, so it's in the morning. So let's take a, talk a little bit about graphics. So the graphics inside of AutoCAD have been getting better over the last few years. They look so much better than they used to look. 
They continue to make some modifications in 2017. If you've ever had a dotted line type, like you see in the upper right-hand corner of my PowerPoint, they show up very faint in the display. They print fine, but they don't show up on the display as nicely as they print, which always makes me you know, a little nervous, right? What's it going to look like when I print? You'll see in AutoCAD 2017, here's that same line type, very clear, very round. We're not, so often our dots inside of line types are not round, which you will actually see also down here in the lower left-hand corner, uh, excuse me, lower right-hand corner, but that left image, uh, that's the way it used to look, right? Our dots look like squares, and then in the lower right-hand corner, you can see now that the dots actually look like dots, which no surprise is the way it should be, right? So a lot of work has been done with line types to get them to look exactly the way, you know, what you see is what, you're, what you get. And then you'll also see in the lower left-hand corner here, and we'll take a look at these. We'll go look at them in AutoCAD. But if you've ever had a hatch pattern that was really close together, when you zoom out, it looks like it's not even, right? These, these parallel hatch patterns, they look like they're not quite even. They print fine. You zoom in, you can tell they're fine. But from a distance, it all look right. All that's been corrected, which is a beautiful, beautiful thing. Let's go take a look. Please hold. And let's go over to the model space. And here you can see right there, I have a dotted line type. I'm actually going to take this guy, and I'm going to go to properties, and let's make it, a, um, let's change the line weight, first of all. Let's make that much bigger. There. Once again, they're nice and round. Let's change the line type, too. Why not? Let's just break all the rules. Forget that bilayer nonsense, right? <laughs> And you can see, I feel like I still need to make it a little bit thicker. There we go. All right, just so you can really see what I'm talking about. The dots are around. Should that be a big deal? No, but it is a big deal, right? Um, and you'll also see that the line types look fantastic. I'm going to zoom up a little bit. Have you ever noticed or have you ever tried to snap to a gap in a line type? Can you see it doesn't even know I'm there? If I went into the erase no, must have been selected. If I went into the erase command and I move my cursor in here, it would be like, what are you talking about? I don't see anything. So there is a fabulous new system variable called LT gap selection, which is off by default. So if you are taking any notes, please write this one down. LT gap selection. So make sure you set that to one and the world will change for you. <laughs> You'll see now, as I move my cursor even between there, it knows that there's an object there. If I go into the erase command, it can see it, right? When I'm in the gap, it can recognize it. More importantly, have you ever tried to do an object snap that was supposed to access the gap, or you tried to still put it in the gap? Now you can do it, like you could do nearest in the gap. Oh yeah, that is awesome. LT gap selection, right, that one down. It's a good one to know for AutoCAD and Jeopardy, right? And then, you should know what I was talking about for the hatching. Let's see. Let's go to this one. So you should see I'm way zoomed far out. That was not even English. <laughs> way zoomed far out. And yet, I can definitely tell that the hatching looks right. It's all nice and parallel, as was mentioned. And then also, I'm all in here, just because it's easy, because I'm here. Um, if, you, if I double click on text, you know that AutoCAD will let me edit that, right? So maybe I'll change it to say double or something like that. Um, the nice thing about text edit now is that it loops. It does a multiple by default. So you can continue to edit multiple text strings, even if they're not the same type of text string, over and over and over again. So if you take a look at my command line, can you see it says edit mode equals multiple? So text edit will continue to loop until I hit that final escape or extra enter to get out, which is what I just did, which is she says is what she just did. <laughs> so text edit now loops, which is good. One less enter in my life that I have to do, which is a good thing. All right, let's see. How are we doing? Design views. Okay, so this is one of those things was not on a wish list. You're, you're going to wonder how you live without it, and it's easy. If you've ever wanted to share your drawing files with somebody, but you don't want them to be able to edit them, you want them to be able to view them, though. They don't have AutoCAD. Uh, 
they just want to be able to look at them, but not touch them. And you don't want them to have to log in. You don't want it to be complicated. You are going to love the new design views. I love them. Let me show you how they work. Super easy. Let's go to let's go to right here. So let's say I have this great drawing file and I want to share it with my stakeholders or with people that maybe don't even have AutoCAD. I don't want them to be able to edit it. I want them to be able to control layers and zoom around. But they just get to look and not touch. So I'm going to go to my A360 tab. Hopefully you guys are all all have A360 accounts. And you do have you have to have an A360 account to do this. It's free. There's no harm in it, and it, there's uh, you know you should all have one. I always like to think of it as the Dropbox for design. It has, A360 is fabulous. If nothing else, it's an amazing backup system for your files, <laughs> and we'll do it for you automatically. So that's another lecture for another day, right? But here's the A360 tab, and I'm going to say share design view. You can see up here in the upper right hand corner, I am logged in. Apparently, no face. Their design view. Now there's two options here. For those of you who get paid by the hour, you want to say publish and display in my browser now. <laughs> you can just sit and wait and watch it. For those of you who actually need to get work done, you probably will just say publish and notify me when complete. And I'm going to pretend I get paid by the hour just because I want you to see what happens. See, there won't be any questions, right? You just say you want to publish them. And it will take a few minutes, so uh, I'm not going to wait for the whole process. I'm going to jump over. I've got a cake in the oven, just like Julia Child. You'd be so proud of me. But you can see it is processing it, converting it, and uploading it. All right, I'm going to go to the cake in the oven over here. Just so you can see what, oh, look at that. <laughs> the cake is all cooked and pretty. This is what you would get. So over on the left-hand side, I can look at individual views if I want to. If you have views saved in the join file, you can actually see my different layouts. And this is the key, an option that says get link. So you can copy that link, and what would you do with it? You would drop it in an email. And then anybody could just go ahead and click on that link that you allow them to, and they can come here and they can look. Once again, they can you know, zoom, they can pan. There's a variety of things that they can do. You can see there's a layer manager. It cannot hurt the file. So it's safe. It's nice and safe. And like I said, they do not have to have an A360 account, only you. So super easy. Very low stress. Oh, there's also another option in there. I should have mentioned it. While you're in there, there's an option for holding a live review. So that means you could actually have multiple people in the same file at the same time, all kind of you know reviewing it together, all nice and coordinated like. So good, 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 great feature. Love it. Design views. Now 3D printing. Now if we were a live audience, I'd ask you to raise your hand if you do any 3D printing or if you have a 3D printer. And that's usually a pretty small percentage of people. It's usually a few hands go up, so if virtually I imagine there's a few of you out there that do. We won't spend a lot of time on this, but I, yeah, it's kind of fun, and it's, uh, I just want you to see how Autodesk is really moving forward into the 3D printing. You know, we're, we're very focused on 3D printing. We, we actually have our own 3D printer, soon to have more, that are for sale, and we're uh, very focused on moving that industry forward. So it wouldn't be good if we didn't have AutoCAD catch up with catch up with that as well. So let me just show you this uh, the 3D printing inside of AutoCAD 2017, and I also want to show you this free app that comes with AutoCAD 2017 called Print Studio, which will make your life so much easier and so much better if you actually do 3D printing. It's an amazing application, yeah, free, and it comes with it. So, and if you don't do 3D printing, you just don't install it. It's pretty simple. Let's go take a look at this part. It does take a little bit more time because these files are large, and I'm, you know, I'm broadcasting this over the internet. So, cross your fingers on this one. I'll try to entertain you with exciting stories. Even though from my vacation, I mostly stayed home. That's not very exciting. So, like I said, it's a pretty big file. It's loading up. Love this file. This is like a, 
a beautiful log cabin or house in the woods or whatever. I wouldn't mind living here. I'm just switching over to model space. You can see it's degrading a little bit because I'm sending it out to all of you. All right. Let's just zoom around a little bit so you can get a better idea of what it looks like. She says, there we go. All right, it's all caught up now. Oh, it's pretty cool looking. I wouldn't mind living there. I don't know about you guys. So, to three, so there's two different ways you can 3D print. You can print to your own 3D printer. That's the 3D print command, no surprise. Or you can send it out to a service because 3D printers can be kind of pricey. So in many cases, you might prefer to just send it out to a 3D printing service. And so that way you don't have to bear the expense of the hardware. You can just kind of basically rent it. So guess what command that is? That is the 3D print service command. So clever. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and let's take a look. Um, I'm going to come up here to the right big uh, upper left-hand corner, which you hit once, not twice, because bad things will happen if you hit it twice, which we've all discovered the hard way. If I go to publish, you'll see send to 3D print service. But we're going to pretend that we have a 3D printer, which I do not, which I do. And we're going to go to the 3D print command. Give it just a second. It wants to know what I want to print. So I'm going to go ahead and, and put a crossing window around all the objects that I want to do a 3D print of. Hit an enter. And it's now analyzing what I have there. And it's going to union them all together so that I can do a 3D print. And this looks very similar to what we had before. So really, so far, there's not a lot of surprises. You may have seen this dialog box before if you've done any 3D printing. There's our little cabin, so cute. You can control the scale factor. You can take objects off, or you can add objects. I'm going to hit an OK, which is going to take me into Print Studio in a second. <laughs> it has to launch Print Studio. If you haven't installed it at this point, wow, it's pretty fast. If you haven't installed it at this point, it will ask you if you want to install it. Once again, it's, it's totally free. And I'm going to move the model to the build surface. It's huge right now, right? It's too big, so let's scale this baby. Let's scale it to fit. And you can see now there is my 3D model. And now I can go about prepping it and getting it ready to print. Now, the nice thing about Print Studio is it's going to hopefully save you some money because we hardly ever get 3D prints right the first time. So it's going to go through. It'll do things like error checking. You can see repairing. It will try to take a fabulous look at this model before you have the expense of sending it out to a print service or a printer, wasting materials, wasting time. It's a great application. I could spend the entire you know, hour on it, and I'm not going to. So I'm not going to go into it in any more detail. Just know that it's amazing. <laughs> I'm just going to leave it at it is amazing. And it's going to save you lots of time if you do 3D printing. I am, but we're not going to do 3D printing. There you go. I kind of gave you a small little glimpse of the world of 3D printing, which is absolutely fascinating. So I want to go to back here. Okay, I think uh, I covered all of this. Oh, incidentally, you can if you are sending it to a 3D print service, it will send it out to an STL format. So then you can send that file to a print service. Okay, so these, what's left over? This is the leftover. <laughs> these are the little things that don't fall into any other buckets. But because they're changes, if I don't tell you once again, I don't, you won't know. So some of these are pretty small, but I think you might want to know about them. Um, for example, let me get this so I can see this page. And then we'll come back and look at this. So if I decide, let's go to a little more normal drawing. If I go into the hatch command, yeah, 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 hatch, hatch. Of course, it'll change the ribbon, right, to give me just the commands that have to do with hatching. Hopefully, you know, underneath properties, there is a very cool option. It's this guy right here. This allows you to set up a layer just for hatching. So that whenever you go on the hatch command, you don't have to change your current layer. It will know what layer you want all of your hatch patterns to land on. All right, so that's been in there for a while. You guys all have that. There's a system variable that goes with that called HP layer. Feels like a computer, computer layer, because <laughs> I use an HP. Um, so it used to be if I typed in the na a name that did not exist, like what's today, Tuesday. I promise there's no layer called Tuesday in there, it would normally call you names, 
and tell you that it's invalid, which can, can be a problem if you're running script files and things like that. So now we have a layer. We'll allow you to create a new layer and set it to be the layer for hatching all at the same time. That's pretty tiny, but there's a little handful of you in there who are going to appreciate that. Underneath annotate, same idea. I told you with the last release of AutoCAD about this amazing new layer feature allows you to tell AutoCAD what layer you want your dimensions to land on. That way you don't have to keep changing your current layer. I am lazy, lazy, lazy. I think there should be a way to set up your layers for all different types of objects so that you hardly ever have to change your current layer. Okay, the problem was this layer only worked if you use the amazing new dimension tool, which I hope you all are because it is truly amazing. I'll have to come back and show that to you if you don't know how to do it. So now this works for all dimensions. So if you come in here and you set your whatever layer, your dimension layer to concrete, for example, whenever you go to dimension, all of your layers will automatically be put on concrete. So once again, that saves time. We love that. Let me go back over to my PowerPoint for the rest of them. I know those are little, but I know there's a few out there who work in the I don't want to not mention them. I showed you text edit, how it defaults to multiple now. And if you take a look at the places list, you know, whenever you go into an, a, a dial, a command that uh, requests files, um, on the left-hand side, there's the places list. If you look in the upper right-hand corner of my PowerPoint right up here, you will see this is what it looks like. It always used to have buzzsaw on it. There's a very small percentage of people who are still using buzzsaw. So um, they finally remove that from the places list. So hopefully you're not using Buzzsaw. And most of us just spend our time trying to figure out how to get rid of it. And now it's been done for us. Also, there was a feature that came out a few years ago called Design Feed. It was in the A360 tab, and, or whatever tab it was called at the time. It's been called a few things. And I actually could never get that feature to work when I was demoing. I could get it to work if I wasn't demoing, but if there was anybody watching, it just did not work. So I used to always show a video because I just couldn't get it to work right. And so apparently I wasn't alone because now they took it off of the A360 tab. So hopefully you are not using design feed. You can still get to it. It just isn't on the ribbon anymore because there were so many issues with it. So if you are a fan, no raid, you can still get to the actual command. And, uh, oh, 3D Orbit. So if you've ever tried to do a 3D Orbit and you had a visual style attached, wow, it wasn't pretty, right? It was not pretty. Well, now 3D Orbit works great, even if there's a complex visual style attached to your 3D model. Yay. Okay. So <laughs> you will also see when you install AutoCAD 2017, you get the Autodesk Desktop app. Let's see if I can hit Escape here and go into it right down here. And you will see that it's telling me that I have an update. I have an update for AutoCAD 2017. It's kind of old, but you know, hey, I've been on sabbatical for two months, all right? <laughs> and also with recap, but that was even older. So I have been badly behaved. I need to come in here and I need to update this. But the nice thing is that, the, that this is not in your face the way it used to be. This is a very friendly application manager and it doesn't just show you updates, it also has some great information. And that's why I wanted to show it to you. If you take a look here, you will see that other than the update, it also has a whole bunch of videos that you can check out. It has articles. And the same would be true of any Autodesk products that you have loaded. They all show up in the same place and they all have great videos and information and, and some of them have content that you can use. So, you know, don't disregard this. Take a look at it. Maybe it will make your life a little bit better. Okay, back to the PowerPoint. The Autodesk Desktop app. I love it. Okay. And then just a couple other things that I'm not going to show you today. Once again, small group of, of well, my person tools that everybody will use. You will find that the migration, migrating your tools from one release to another is much easier than it used to be. You will get a great matrix. Most of you have probably already done this. And that makes it easy for you so to select exactly what you want to move forward from your previous release. So I think they did a good job of that this year. And a coordination model. So some of you are using Vim360 Glue, or some of you are um, using Navisworks. So in the last release of AutoCAD, I showed you how you could bring those coordination models into AutoCAD. 
and you could look at them. <laughs> you, you couldn't snap to them, but I guess it was better than nothing. But now with AutoCAD 2017, you can do you can use the center object snap on those coordination models, and you can use the endpoint object snap, which is very very helpful, so that you can basically make sure that anything you're drawing in AutoCAD does not have a collision with the model, right? So with the coordination model. So if you're if that's something that you're into, I think you're going to love the fact that now you can actually snap to the coordination model. I'm almost finished here. I'm just going to give a plug for A360. I mentioned it earlier. It's a great way for you to um, view and edit and share your designs, save your designs. You can have AutoCAD set up so that whenever you do a save, it doesn't just save to your local drive or to the network, whatever you have set up. It also saves it to your A360 account. I love that. Great insurance to make sure you don't use, lose your files. It has much more to offer than that, but at the very least, I think Everybody should be using it for, for that. And then there's also an, an AutoCAD 360 Pro mobile app. You can take your AutoCAD joins with you to the job site. Just download the free app. You can open those files. You can mark them up. Uh, because our, if, you know, if you're using a tablet, you have GPS built into it. You can drop a marker right in the join file so it knows where you are. A lot of capabilities. It's a great app. Real crowd pleaser. Just, just you know, look for the app called just AutoCAD 360 and then we'll find it. And then last but not least, I'm going to actually go back over to AutoCAD because I feel like a lot of people do not know that if you hit this X in the upper right hand corner of the screen, this is apps. it will take you to the Autodesk Exchange and specifically it will share with you apps that have to do with whatever program you were in when you clicked on the X. So for example, I was in AutoCAD, so it's showing me AutoCAD apps. It's showing me the most popular apps, which, no surprise, are free. <laughs> and because the most popular apps were always free, they added in this section, most popular paid apps. And uh, so these are the ones. But you can see, like, these are $5, it's just $1.49. If there, maybe there's this feature you've been waiting for Autodesk to put into AutoCAD, and we just don't do it. I bet you somebody else did. And I bet you you can find it here. And you can do a search to get what you want, or you can just come in here and check them all out. You know, I'm a big fan of Hangman because it's a total, my, total time waster. <laughs> you can search by release. Well, I think we're, so if you're not in 17, you can still search for apps that relate to your release end of 2014. You can actually do a search type in AutoCAD 2012, and it will also show you apps that relate to a much older release of AutoCAD. Um, this thing then makes me laugh because it was actually designed and created by Autodesk. You can see that there, and it's kind of a fun app to play inside of your AutoCAD. But you did not hear that from me, because I'm only teaching you how to be an effective designer. <laughs> Just going to go back over to AutoCAD, because I picked the biggest thing, switch to a different one. So where do they all go? You will actually see under add-ins right there. There's my hangman. The defaults are loading a, a, a tool that allows you to import SketchUp files. Here's the Exchange Manager so that you can make sure all of your files are up to date. Apparently it doesn't want to show up today. Hello. It would be funny if it crashed right there. It did. Let's hope it didn't crash all the way. All right. What are the odds of that? It would crash on the last click. It may not really crash, but we're not going to hang around and find out. <laughs> so take a look at the Autodesk Exchange because there are all kinds of apps on there that could make your life better using AutoCAD or any of the Autodesk products.